Hi, Crystal here. Welcome to another video of the Interactive Immersive HQ. And today will be a bit different. It's not a typical tutorial. I'm actually going to go over what I usually carry with me on a remote trip for my death care. So a little bit of context. I'm currently in a small remote village in Italy and for a one month art residency. So I have one month for research, self-research and doing a small installation here. It's a small town, so there isn't much stores. There's no hardware stores, there's no electronic stores. So I need to carry everything that I need for the month with me. And I have one luggage, so I'm sharing also with my clothes. So I just want to make sure that I have all the gear I want. And I'm going to go over what I brought. So everything I'm going to go over, I will also put it in the description below. So you're able to refer back to and things if I reference it, you can also refer back to the description. I'll first talk about things I carry in my backpack and then I'll go over to the things that I have in my luggage. So my laptop, laptop I'm currently working on is a MSI Slave. It's actually pretty new. It's a GS66 and it has a 3070 Ti uh, GPU. And I've been using MSI for about four years now. So I know that I enjoy using it. It can be a little bit loud when it's on pop, kind of loud, but it runs touch designer and any other devices. And um, I recommend it. A hard drive. So I keep all kind of my computer stuff within this little cosmetic bag that I actually got on an airport uh, airplane one time and it's, it's been just great. So Hard drive, this is two terabyte sun disk. And I like using the sun disk hard drives because look, this is this is so small and it has two terabytes. And it also has a one terabyte one that's actually even smaller than this. I have this handy dongle, and this dongle is for this really nice app that I'm obsessed with called AstroPad. And pretty much what it does is that you can plug it onto your laptop and you can make your iPad into a second monitor. So another thing, iPad over here, and I can make it have a second monitor without using any wires. And I'm very used to having a two screen workspace. And before I was always trying to find a good solution of traveling with a two screen solution. And it would be like I have a walk-on tablet, but then it has all those wires and it's bulky. And it's important to be conservative of your, of your real estate when you're traveling. And I have my earphones here, right here. And while I'm traveling, I actually don't bring my bigger noise canceling Sony headphones. I just use these earphones and they're, they're, I find them quite useful because they're kind of long and they get really into your ear, so it still quite creates this noise canceling effect. And I've been using this brand for 10 plus years and it's been great while traveling with USB extension, pretty self-explanatory. It's good to have my three, uh, the trackball mouse, it's great. Because if you're on the airplane and you want to move, you can just use put it put on your on your leg and it works. You don't can't see, but my mouse is going crazy right now. And you don't have to do this anything. And I agree, it takes like maybe like two days to get used to it, but it is it is a must. I can't really go back to using regular mouse anymore. And I got this from Ulvers before, but it's good to have a nice hard shell case for your mouse. If you're traveling, good to have an adapter. And I think this is the one thing that people usually forget to bring. And it's not an easy thing to find other than if you're on an airport. And actually, I didn't keep this in my bag. I had this in my luggage and my luggage was lost and delayed in my connection flight for three days. So I wasn't able to charge my laptop for three days. So 
Now I know I'm always keeping this on my backpack with me. Hotspot. Especially when you're traveling, you might be in the airport for a while, and also you don't know how the Wi-Fi is. If you need a video call or anything, having a hotspot device is great. Been using this device for, I would say, three years now, and I get like a one month plan, it's twenty gigabytes. It's usually like ninety nine dollars, but they often have discounts. So I got this month for like sixty five dollars. And note that it's great, but it's like more like a backup plan. So don't extreme. I don't think it's great. I do to stream on this or like download anything on this, but in between stuff, this is a good thing to have. Like don't run an installation on this. It, it's not that reliable. <laughs> and I think that is what I have on my laptop uh, or my backpack. And now I'll go over to what do I have onto my, my luggage. And since we're talking about internet, Ethernet cable, I have no clue how my Wi Fi is coming in here, coming over here. And I want to make sure that if I have a video call, if I have an installation and I need to remote in or anything, that I'm covered. So the Alberts usually use like a, a travel extending Ethernet cable, but I think like a 15 feet. Ethernet cable is quite safe to have and it can fit like in this bag and doesn't feel too crazy of a real estate. If you're doing installations, good to know the size of your space. This is a laser tape measure. It's good to have like a measuring tape, but it could be quite heavy and bulky. And for me, if I want to know how tall, how far it is to the ceiling, it's kind of hard by myself, but like over here, I know from my hand to the ceiling, it's about five feet and I can change it to meters. And this brand specifically runs on a AAA battery. So I know I'm able to buy the battery universally. Continue talking about insulation. Good to have gaffer state. If you have all these wires down, it's good to tape it down. And I use black gaffer's tapes and it's easy to rip and everything without needing a scissor. For this trip, I actually brought two IR cameras. This is very kind of specific for what I'm doing, but I've been quite obsessed with using IR cameras lately rather than just bring my Connect device because this is lighter, it's cheaper. If something happens to my uh, while I'm coming and it breaks, I don't feel as attached to them. But what can you do with an IR camera? <laughs> well, the Interactive Immersive EQ, somewhat recent, had this really nice blog on how you can use IR camera for triggering with motion. And it is written by yours truly, and I'll link it in the description. <laughs> so I brought two IR cameras, and this is, I believe this one's like $35, so it's not too bad. And this one is a little bit more intense. So this one, I can have a more stable base and have like a long USB. But this one, I feel like I can tape down the wall or anything when I need it. USB is a lot, sh um, cord is a lot shorter. So I also have a USB extension cord over here. And this is, I think, quite helpful if you're doing a installation, uh, especially in like an art residency situation, because it's not something that can you easily find. You can order it on like Amazon and deliver, but it's just it's a nice thing to keep with you. And also, especially if you're doing a project that needs like USB power, it's hard to find a USB power and you don't know if you're ordering one that it's actually reliable or it works. So USB extension is annoying to carry this, but could be very helpful. Camera. This is my Sony A7R. And why do I have such a bulky camera? Because if you're doing installation, it's important to have good documentation, especially in low light camera. It's some, the phone is great, but doesn't really cut it. 
And having good documentation is very important doing immersive work because no one would know about it if you don't have any beautiful photos or videos to, to share. And I have my Pico projector with me. This is like my Pico projector. I want to recommend this to do like a big gig that's great for testing. And I use a Philips mic, um, Pico Max. It's, it's decent. It's not like the best Pico projector, but it's what I have. And I, I, it gets the work done. <laughs> and for the Pico projector, I had a this octopus leg um, tripod. And I probably won't be able to put in description the exact model I used because I have this for a while, but there's so many different types. So I'll just put a different, different reference down. And then I can wrap this on like a stable chair or whatever if I need to do some type of weird configuration for the projector. But if you have a projector, you also need an HDMI cord because that's also something I would not be able to find in a small village, HDMI cord. And I made sure to have like a comfortable distance where I don't have to have the projector really close to my laptop, but also won't take too much of a real estate space. What else do I can share? This I actually have in my bag, but I'm an intense note taker. And I, for the past eight months, I've been using a Remarkable and I enjoy it. I, you can write notes on it. I journal on it, lists on it, and actually don't use the Remarkable pen. I use this other cheaper pen because the Remarkable pen is quite expensive. And I think it's like very easy to get lost. And this one's bright. So I know I, I see it more easily and I like the way it works on my hand. It's a lot cheaper, as I mentioned, and they can like erase on it in the back. So do note that like, I have disclaimer. I have had two times where it did it work. It failed on me. So actually, when I got it, it first was glitching quite a lot, but I was able to send it over and they gave me a new device. And the second time, I had my elbow like resting on it. And I guess my elbow is very heavy that it actually cracked the inside screen, and I started having dead dead pixels and I have to mail it back in and then get a new one. So there's a one year warranty. So it's not super hardy, but at least it has somewhat of a good um, customer service so you can have a new one and I still use it. So just, just to let you know, Bluetooth speaker. This is not something I would use on a installation, but it's good to have with you to if also for pleasure, <laughs> like other than having like a dev kit, if I just travel and going, this is nice to have. And this is small device, but this, this Muzin speaker is actually quite powerful and it's heavier than look because it's metal. So it will, doesn't have the vibration for, for our music. I use just like the simple, USB light. This give me a little bit nicer lighting. My video calls and on the video, I have my Logitech webcam, so so it's clear. And I use this microphone, but I wouldn't say I recommend it. It's not a really great mic. <laughs> so. Um, if my this video voice quality isn't as nice as my other videos, it's because I don't have the mic set up and this mic isn't great. So now you know why. And with that, I hope you found something that you would find quite useful to carry with you. And I would love to know in the description or not description, the comment below what you found helpful. And if you want to share anything that you usually carry, because I'm constantly trying to update and make sure that I have the most convenient 
gear for traveling. And I usually try to do like a trip like this at least once a year. And it's every time I, I figure out that like okay, next time I need to know, I should have brought a longer ethernet cable. And this time now I know I should bring the adapter in my bag with me because if your luggage gets lost, it sucks. <laughs> and with that note, I say farewell and hope you enjoy this video. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.